When people talk about tanks from World War II, they tend to focus on bigger, more impressive vehicles. Tanks like the Char B-1, Tiger, IS-2, and Pershing. For fans of German tanks, this is especially true. Most will say the Panther is their favorite tank, and that shouldn't be very surprising. It's basically a heavy tank masquerading as a medium. For the Panzer IV, Germany's true medium for the majority of the war, it doesn't get as much love. Don't get me wrong, the Panzer IV definitely has a lot of fans, but it's certainly overshadowed. Unlike most other vehicles in the series, opinions on the Panzer IV aren't very polarized at all. Most seem to think it was just average, or that it was a bit like the M4 Sherman. Not incredibly impressive, but reliable and easy to build. Well, let's see how that holds up. Its story starts in the mid-1930s, around 1934 specifically. At this time, a medium tank concept called ZW is being developed. This tank, armed with a 37mm gun, would mainly engage infantry and other tanks. To complement the ZW, a design called BW was drawn up. This would use a 75mm howitzer, and would engage fortifications. In many ways, the BW is a sort of self-propelled gun. The relationship between the ZW and BW is interesting. Usually for tanks, they're created asynchronously to fill certain niches. In the case of the ZW and BW, they were designed at roughly the same time, and complement one another. The ZW would become the Panzer III, and as you can probably guess, the BW would become the Panzer IV. The chassis for the BW is based on a previous vehicle, the Begleitwagen. It was kind of an automotive testbed, but not really. It was used to experiment with two things, forward transmissions and high-performance tank engines, but there were plans to use it for future combat vehicles. The BW borrowed a turret structure, cupola, hatches, and machine gun mount from the ZW. That's why the Panzer III and IV look so similar. In 1936 BW-1, a drivable BW with leaf spring suspension was completed and shown off. An order for 35 was placed in December of that same year, and it was completed in 1938, with the first two being delivered in late 1937. The Panzer III initially had some component issues, namely the transmission and suspension. The Panzer IV also had some trouble, mostly with the suspension, but it was better than the Panzer III overall. In 1940 with the invasion of France, the two tanks were able to truly test their mettle. The two could easily destroy most French tanks, though they did have some difficulty penetrating a few. The Panzer IV 75 was engraved for destroying tanks, but it was invaluable for dealing with infantry. Despite their success, it was clear the Panzer III needed a better gun, so a 50mm was fitted. Armor was also increased on both designs. During Operation Barbarossa, the invasion of the Soviet Union, German tank designers got another wake-up call. Soviet tanks like the T-34 and KV-1 had much better armor than they were expecting. The Panzer III was upgunned yet again, but it still wasn't enough, and they couldn't fit anything bigger. Their only option was to upgun the Panzer IV. This was done with the Panzer IV F2, which now had a long 75. In terms of doctrinal use, the Panzer III and IV were more or less the same. The Panzer IV became the premier medium tank for Germany, as it could reliably deal with the majority of threats. As the war dragged on, the Panzer IV was fitted with more armor. The extra weight began to take a serious toll. As mentioned earlier, the suspension was already a bit weak before all the armor. When moving off-road, the bogies would sometimes shear off. Not only was this compounded by the extra weight, but regardless of the terrain, the suspension began breaking down much more frequently. Even with the additional armor, the Panzer IV stood little chance. It was roughly equal to the 75 Shermans, arguably less so given the average combat range. In terms of performance, it was said to be sluggish and hard to drive, especially off-road. And just like with the Panther and Tiger, it suffered from a lack of spare parts. In the very late stages of the war, the Panzer IV was about as available as the Panther, sometimes even less so. It was the only tank Germany produced throughout the entirety of the war, though production was slated to end in July 1945. Despite what you might have heard, the Panzer IV was actually a bit difficult to produce, more so than the Panther actually. Even when the process was improved, they still couldn't keep pace with attrition, especially on the Eastern Front. In summary, the Panzer IV was pretty good in the early to mid-war period, but late war, its performance dropped off. It's kind of the opposite of the M4, which started off with some trouble and became more reliable over time. Despite what some people think, producing more Panzer IVs wouldn't have saved Germany. As mentioned just a bit ago, the Panther was easier to produce, and towards the end of the war was about as reliable. So overall, the Panzer IV was alright. Anyway, that's about all there is to it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you on the next one.